shit on me. Am I am I the only one who some mornings just wakes up and feels like he's the uh, he's the pawnbroker in the crow? Uh, a better <laughs> question is, how are you going to sleep? Well, if that's you know, how you're waking up, better question is, what's happening before you go to sleep, bro? I, I, I got to be honest, there's there's the appropriate amount of chemicals involved of one form or another to make sure I get yeah. to sleep. I got to get to sleep early, get up early. That's how, how, it, how it works here until we uh, until we fully take over the pop culture universe and, you know, I can, I can lose the day job. So everybody listening, please. You know, Apple iTunes, uh, you know, I- iTunes, Apple Apple Podcasts, go in with those five-star reviews. We, we need you. And no, I'm not kidding. This is the, the kidding, not kidding section here. But nevertheless, I do wake up some mornings, or at least, you know what it is, Rashawn? It's when I start reading the news. That's always when I when I go right to my pawnbroker in the crow mode. I don't even <laughs> care that, that it's Christmas time. Uh, the thing I know. tell you always not to do. There is that, you know, and yet, and yet here I am back it, back at it again. So, you know, I, I guess I'm the only one who, who has that reaction of shit on me, but still it is us. It is I, Josh, the bird man leading, leading this ragtag crew down into the steam tunnels. Once again, to delve and plumb the depths of pop culture, taking us all the way from the Atari to the PS5, all the way from mixtapes over to uh napster remember napster remember how like cool not cool that was all at the same time fun fact i did fun fact i did an internship with napster's best friend and uh i actually was part of in some ways the ground floor of napster in a weird 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 way wild wait is that the guy is that is that the seth green character in the the italian job (laughs) with the real (laughs) napster no i'm pretty sure he's a guy who uh ended up going to jail for a little bit of time probably <laughs> it, mm. was napster. it was napster after all i mean let's be honest it was always yeah i think somewhat. i think started it, it all the man. guy who got lampooned a little bit in social network through justin timberlake because that was technically the same guy okay all right nice well but I'm i knew that. his i knew his friend so there there are certain inside trailer things i kind of got discussed about and i'll tell you this one he knew he was caught well before we all found out that he got caught and two it was not as bad as we thought it was going to be for him he ended up doing all right all right well Mm -hmm. you know so so glad to see that (laughs) that america is still working right yeah, Thank you exactly. good for him for, for a certain shade and a certain gender yeah you, you yeah, kind of it, it, it ain't kind of like monopoly it? like it, it just takes a couple of different dice rolls or the right card pool and you're getting That's right it, out of jail it's not went, even a problem. To, went to community chess boom there it was what do you know all right but well with that we are we are bringing it back we heard we heard the wonderful sonorous tones of greg the star child the sense over there how you doing this morning greg Oh man, I'm getting all in the Christmas spirit. We're doing it all today. I'm gonna get my uh, rum and my Nat King Cole, and yes. uh, yeah, all the Christmas is going down. So that's my vibe. I, I will, you know, I gotta say, I, I get a little grumbly around the overplaying of of Christmas carols at this time of year. I much prefer the orchestral arrangements by and large because I can tolerate them a lot longer, but. With the huge exception of you can play any Nat King Cole Christmas song, and I'm I'm just fine. Like that is totally fine. You can absolutely don't, don't sing to the white women. That's what I, they used to tell Nat King Cole. And he did it. I got yeah. it. Nothing but hats off. The man had a prime time television show right. in the fifties. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I got nothing but love for him, so I got to support him. Uh, that's usually what we play actually I, I, we play like the motown christmas and you know it's Excellent. Like, uh, don't get me wrong i got love for bing crosby but we ain't doing that shit yeah i get it i get yeah. it you know another, partial to the waitresses waitresses absolutely another one of my favorites another one of my favorites i mean I, i'm not gonna let america or the rest of the world think that i don't have motown christmas either i mean uh, i got black parents so <laughs> you got it you got to represent it's a it. bylaw that you need to have temptation somewhere in that mix or else you are getting some some conversation so mm-hmm. yeah motown christmas always needs to happen but yeah mixing some waitresses you you like that christmas yeah. rap all right i don't know no right. this christmas we're breaking in uh, james brown christmas which i gotta oh, be honest absolutely if you don't have it 
go and get that shit. All right, if we're if if we're ranking songs, then it, it starts with Donny Hathaway, and then it's everyone else. <laughs> I I don't know if this is my Raquel's a Trent or just you know my uh, I was telling Greg before the show that you know I got when I got my twenty three and Me results back it was exactly what my parents told me that there was no surprises that it was like okay here's the Jew and here's the white European it was just like okay the, nothing no surprises there's no 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 okay um, but maybe all that but I am still always very fond of. Uh, I'm still always very fond of um, the Kinks, uh, Father Christmas. I always love that 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 oh. version of that, which mm-hmm. is you know, I, I just I, it, it's my Rebel Christmas in me. Uh, it gets your Christmas cockles warmed up. It does, it does. You know, give us Father Christmas. Give us some money. <laughs> we ain't got yeah. no time for your silly toys. We'll beat you up if you don't hand it over. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> there we go. There's a little of the Christmas spirit and. Awesome, a forgotten Christmas classic, by the way, that, that should be mixed in there just for giggles every once in a while. A Weird Al original, um, though I say original, he still does structuring it off the classic Christmas Carol st- song style. Uh, Christmas at Ground Zero, just telling you, just gets forgotten every year. It, it really is, uh, you know, it really is, is, is worth a listen. Go in there, check it out. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere, so. I'll do that. Yeah, sure. not have has the has the immortal lines of oh, what a fluke we're going to get nuked on this jolly holiday so <laughs> 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 what else could you what else could you possibly ask for but yes we're still here we are still the steam gentlemen in the holiday spirit um and you know after our after last week's debate which i think we we thoroughly solved that yes okay die hard is a bruce willis movie first and foremost we we, we settled that that in the end really is where where that lands unequivocally we really started to ask ourselves you know again we want to make ourselves the president of hollywood or the triumvirate president of hollywood so you know we were kind of asking what what makes our holiday movies what makes our christmas movies what what is it that we want to see happen and i think that's an important question you know we we are often art critics but what would happen if you gave us the reins and allowed us to become the artists the auteurs, if you will, you know, taking over this the industry because it always looked. Let's face it, you know, armchair quarterbacking is easy. Okay, I, I love my football, watch every Sunday, but the very nature of it is, hey, you see that whole field, you're like, why didn't he just throw there? And you know, same thing with with Hollywood. They make this movie. Why don't they just do that? It's very easy to to make that commentary. So every once in a while, we do have to put our money where our mouth is. And try and show the world what you know what could happen, what we could do, and where Hollywood is just leaving money hanging low off that money tree. So, with that, I'm going to start by turning it over to the mighty Greg Descents to let him tell us a little bit more about what he was thinking about in his Wait, Hollywood you don't, pitch meeting. You, you don't want to know how I'm doing? Like, you only want to check in? Oh you my goodness! To I'm going to have to edit that out. I'm so oh, I did that. Well, again. I, I'm oh, feeling oh. fucking left out. That's how I'm doing. Go ahead, Greg. <laughs> Feeling like a Muslim during December. Like, no one's trying to talk to me. No one's trying to talk to me. It's like, I don't even exist. Uh, oh, shit. That, oh, shit on me. That's all I have to say. <laughs> there it is again. Exactly. I told you I was feeling that way this morning. I'm told you. You know what it is? I think it's because Josh sent us the podcast uh going over the vodcast going over the Hell's Angels, and one of the more notorious bike groups was the Cleveland Steamers. I think that's what's going on right now. <laughs> that stuck in his head. That was his ongoing joke that week, was indeed the Cleveland Steamers. Yes. <laughs> the bike club, which had their own which had their own initiation group. All right. But- too to too late. He's mad. No, it's it's about time we start nope, airing out. Our, I, I think it's about time we start airing out our grievances. I'm about Uh-oh. to grab a big metal pole and we're Uh-oh. gonna pass it around. This is about to be festivist for the rest of us right Let's now. Right here. All right, <laughs> right now, because I got a lot of problem with you people. <laughs> <laughs> Rip Jerry Stiller. Miss you every fucking day, brother. But but Rashawn, three of clubs. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Oh, that I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear. I'm happy to hear. The fuck? That was. <laughs> I, I just wanted to be asked. I didn't I say know. I, I absolutely. Fuck, that was it. 
<laughs> my fucker was like, I'm fine. <laughs> my was like, I'm it, fine. I'm having a pleasant experience. In I'm, so, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's I'm okay. Fine. It's okay. You talk to your friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, everybody listening, that that legit just happened. But that's to to, to be quite oh, honest, that is not the worst shit I pulled on these two. So some of my some of my dumb moves are so infamous and will follow me literally till the day I die. Uh, <laughs> and then die. after, <laughs> yeah. And, and I technically I'm, with our plans is going to go after a little I'm, bit. I'm, yeah. I'm nothing but amazed that these two guys still even talk to me. To be quite honest. <laughs> that's still like i i, I kind of don't know why they still made me for the show but i'm I'm grateful they do quite honestly just for everyone listening i'm I'm really glad you two are here i i hope it, i hope that shows through week after week because you, I'm, I'm you cook shy. a pretty good brisket so yeah. okay all right i got everybody has to have a redeeming quality i mean hitler, hitler loved his dog, right that's all i'm saying it's like wow your are- next <laughs> jump was hitler <laughs> you know why There's no one because- has that you can go to because it's a safe jump because you always look better by comparison most of us anyway right? i was gonna say there's a lot of leeway in that these days there is but also argue is. being associated in the same sentence isn't gonna help you though maybe not maybe not but you know it's 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 a good standard for human inconsistency what can i tell you right exactly <laughs> it's a good standard for just are you responsible for the genocide of millions of people no okay then you're at least in this call you're doing okay i mean (laughs) go about your day you're doing all right go about your day sir you're you're doing okay you're taking it on but nevertheless all right let's bring it back around to the star child now that we know now that we know the three clubs is doing all right and having a fine day which we're happy we're happy to hear (laughs) <laughs> let's hear a little bit about what greg wants to do with his holiday movie and his 10 minute pitch here Let, let's let's make some magic here gregory all right i mean i'm ready i will swing it if i need to swing it i'm absolutely fine with that um because we 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 landed last week for me that uh, the fact that ultimately what people really want is just summer movies all year round Going by that premise, Christmas movies are basically the summer movies of winter. You know, like that's really all they are. They're, you know, you know popcorn movies, pretty simple, usually generally bad. When was the last time you heard of a Christmas movie winning an award? When was the last time you heard of a summer movie winning an award? It doesn't happen that often on either end of the spectrum. Actually, I would even say it happens less with Christmas movies because Christmas movies can't think of the last one that won an Oscar, but summer movies. Yeah. You know, there have been a few, you know, there has been your gladiators, you know, and those kinds of movies where, yeah, you can definitely see how this uh, changed the game a little bit. So I'm going to kind of split my time up in two. My first movie is going to be uh, ideally what people want to see. And then my second movie is going to be like what I want to see. So my first movie is going to be just a insane summer Christmas heist film. Exactly. Basically, I don't know, Fast and Furious meets Bridget Jones Diary meets just a smidgen of John Wick. But with Christmas on top. You see what I'm saying? So basically, it's going to happen during the Christmas season. So it's going to be unbelievably gaudy. You're going to have your female, uh, um, maybe love interest. I'm going to say love interest. We want her pretty, but kind of awkward, but not so pretty where it's obvious nothing bad has ever happened to her because that pretty privilege is real. But we want her to be that kind of relatable. You know what I'm saying? And then you're going to have your main character, you know, your guy is going to be somewhat John McClane ish, you know, probably in attitude, but we want him to have that kind of aging, you know, look, you know what I mean? Like our generation, we're uh, struggling with this whole distinguished thing. 
And we're just going to hit all of the buttons going down. Jerry Bruckheimer can go ahead and produce this bitch. Like we're going to have just a massive summer film extravaganza, but in winter, because that's what Die Hard is. That's all it is. That's why everyone clings so desperately to try to make Die Hard a Christmas film. You go in, and I'm pretty sure people put it on their list for Christmas movies. And it still not like we said before it's a bruce willis film so you can put it in whatever season that you want but it's because that's what we want we basically want snow explosions that's it we want snow explosions we basically want chases in the snow which makes them better because it's slippery Chases all right no are tight yeah you know that's all we want and again go ahead vin diesel we covered Vin Diesel, right? Ho, ho, ho. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Knocked it out of the park. That man hits every line every time. He's basically bald, you know, white Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> That's it. But, but also you get to throw in family. Family. Exactly. Right? Christmas, Families. family. Exactly. It writes itself. All right, it, it completely writes itself. And I want to just, I want this movie to be completely made by focus groups. Like I want this to be just all focus groups from top to bottom. And I guarantee you, people are going to run to see this thing. A absolutely. If we can get Michael Bay, it'd be nice if we can get Michael Bay. Produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, it would be nice. Most of the people from Fast and Furious, it would be nice. And then, you know, Santa Claus can be played by Samuel L. Jackson because who the fuck cares? Like, it's Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> you know, or, oh, wait, no, we touched on Sylvester Stallone. It could also be played by Sylvester Stallone. Absolutely. And one of the, I don't know, one of the elves could be Megan Fox. I don't know. You know what? You see where I'm going with this. I, so I, that... I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing somebody I'm seeing Megan Fox, you know, leaning over Santa's sleigh, of course, you know, just in that <laughs> shot that yes, totally got me out to see Transformers in the first place. I'll admit Absolutely. It, okay, you suckered yeah. me in. Yeah, you know, because again, these movies, they're bad. They're bad. That's why they don't win awards. All right. Oscar season, Christmas. No, man. No one wants to see this shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Christmas movies. Are supposed to be awesomely bad but that brings me to the movie i would make all right like dig this premise all right it's a little bit absurd but at the same time it gives everybody what they want i haven't got a title yet but i'm gonna you know we're just gonna go with you know christmas first or christmas forward we're gonna call that you know the project for now and basically jesus returns to earth and it turns out like, even though we think that Jesus understood everything that was happening to him in his life, he didn't. So he was just as blown away by this whole concept of being the son of God and heaven and hell and these abilities that he seems to have. He was just as blown away and was trying to understand it himself. I mean, the dude walked around in the wilderness for how long? You know, damn near almost killed somebody when he was a kid. Like, he's still living with a lot of the trauma of what happened to him. And now, damn it. He's back. He's back on Earth and he sees, whoa, Christmas? Like he knew Christmas was a thing, you know, uh, in the ether or heaven or wherever that he spent the last couple thousand years. But then he comes back down and he sees what it's become. So he thinks it's going to be super easy and everyone's going to love him. And they hate him. No one wants to do anything about it. He remembers the first time this happened. All of his air quotes followers who are supposed to worship him as the returning Messiah. No one believes him. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to go to these Christians because, you know, conservatives, <laughs> they'll believe anything, right? <laughs> so he goes to the conservatives, no one believes him again, you know, so he goes to some Pentecostals, no one believes him either. So then he finally finds some people that will believe him, Satan worshipers. They're the only people that will absolutely say, you know what, you may be right, you may not be right, but we'll help you out. So he goes on this 
a crusade to try to convince everyone that he's really Jesus Christ and that this is really his holiday. But then something happens. Satan, with the help of, uh, of Zuckerberg, come together because they find out because Satan tells Zuckerberg that Jesus is back and he is trying to take his holiday back. You know, and all the corporate guys, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. If Jesus comes back, people are going to start giving their money to the poor and shit like that. They're not going to buy a bunch of, you know, crap that's going to end up lodged in the throat of a dolphin someday. No. How am I going to get to the moon if Jesus comes back? So then. This is not what Christmas is about. This is not what Christmas is about. (laughs) So then they team up with like, I don't know, pick a terrorist group, but they team up with a terrorist group because obviously if Jesus comes back, then everybody's going to know that that's the true faith. And then no one's going to want to be part of any other religion. So now that's going to be bullshit. So they all team up to start, try to stop Jesus. So Jesus is like, Oh, well now what do I do? And now it kind of takes a note from uh, this movie called the rise of the guardians uh, it was an animated film, came out some years ago, but it was yes. like the Easter Bunny and I think Jack Frost and the Sandman, they all team and, and Santa Claus and they all make this super team to uh, try to stop, I think, the Nightmare King or something like that. So here, Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, who's really happy to see Jesus alive. Like he's really happy to see Jesus because, you know, the Easter Bunny generally only comes around when Jesus dies. So he's actually really happy. to see. So then Jesus teams up with a, uh, a, a, a Baptist preacher. That's Ezekiel Jackson. Teams up with this Baptist preacher to go and find these other magical figures so they can stop the corporations from trying to keep uh, a stranglehold on Christmas. And you can play it as kind of a children's film. You can play it kind of like, again, you know, add in that Fast and the Furious. I mean, do you want to see Jesus driving a Mustang? I want to see Jesus driving a Mustang. Fuck yeah, bro. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I'll watch the shit out of Jesus in a muscle car. Like, you can go ahead and throw in all kinds of elements into this. But the premise, I say that premise is solid. I, I, I'm liking your elevator pitch. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a green light. I'm seeing some money. How do you feel about the title? Jesus must die. I can work with that. I mean, yeah. it's Jesus. So he's, it's not like right. that's going to, it's, it's not of, like that's going to stop him. You know, as you said <laughs> last Jesus. week, spoiler alert, Jesus yeah. dies at the end, right? So we can right. go with something yeah. like that. You know, Jesus Christ must die. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we, that's how we, that's how we sell it. I, you know, you think about the, you know, the, the, the bad publicity alone will get you ticket sales around the block, right? Easily. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm definitely seeing some legs in this. I'm definitely, I'm seeing that. But my only concern is what's your merchandising angle? Oh, that's easy. Cause you're going to have um, tons of action figures. You're going to be able to have each character can have their each individual car. Okay. Um, I right. mean, the memes and the t-shirts damn near sell themselves. So right there you're tripping into merchandise and nfts you know if you plan this perfectly right right gotta think of the millennials so yeah yeah. you gotta think of the millennials they're gonna need their memes and nft mft nfts so between that and yeah i mean all of the ironic t-shirts yeah this is there's tons of possibilities here and people have been trying to meld the two universes of Santa and Jesus for the longest time. And I, I don't think Jesus would be mad at Santa. You know, I think Jesus would be like, thanks for keeping the tradition alive, Santa. You know, like if it wasn't for you, then absolutely no one would be talking about my skinny ass. Uh, you kept it alive, bro. And I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you. We're definitely moving away from the original South Park tape that made them famous with the Jesus Christ for Santa Claus here. This is this that is actually team-up. made me think of the uh, uh, Jesus Santa Claus team up. Jesus would not be antithetical, would not be against uh, Santa at all. I, don't I see. Think so. I'm seeing a scene with like, you know, it's like there's only one man to call for this, you know, and Jesus goes to his flip phone. Right. Yep. You know, and hits Bang. the button and it hits the it just says SC on it. You yep. know what I'm saying? And then you get the ring and you just see a close up of the phone, right? You know, and then it you just writes see a, itself. 
just see the red hand, you know, the red sleeved hand go in and go for the big man, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's like I'm 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 definitely seeing this. I, yeah. I love and I mean explosion. no matter what, it. it's gonna have magical elements, you know, because one, well, Jesus performs miracles, like he actually can do that. So Jesus is gonna actually perform Christmas miracles during Christmas. Well, yeah, yeah, wouldn't yeah. You know, that would be yeah. interesting. And it would be interesting to see who would call it a fake and who would call it part, who would call Jesus part of the deep state. So you mm -hmm. got that going for you. You know, you've got exactly. all, the, all of the elements right now. Yeah. Well, know? that's my point. Yeah. Because the Christian establishment, you know, like they wouldn't want to lose all of that power because if Jesus comes back, no one needs you, Joel Osteen. No one needs you. No one uh -huh. wants to hear. You. Right. You know, like oh, no yeah. one wants to hear you. You're not in charge anymore. Jesus is back. Have a seat. We'll uh, see if you're going to be part of his kingdom. That would be an excellent, an excellent episode of Undercover Boss. Let's be honest here. <laughs> 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 Maybe you can work that into the whole thing there too. <laughs> right. Okay, we're going to need to shave. You're going to need to shave that beard. And, all right. Uh, well, who am I kidding? I mean, let's be honest. Jesus is black, so he could walk into Joel Holstein's church and no one would recognize him in the first place. Let's just be completely honest. Hey, <laughs> would, Joel. But they would be like, uh, sir, um, um, mm, I'm sorry, but valets actually have their own station. It's out there. And so yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Down and in the little in between the uh custodial area and the uh Sir. the bathroom. Sir. So uh, if you could, you know, and they, I have they the would, Mercedes. Do, would do the hand the Mercedes SL. An aggressive point. <laughs> you them to both hands. <laughs> <laughs> like they go from praying to like to get the fuck out. Like, yeah, like hey, like this is yeah, no, no. Uh, I'm so, I'm sorry, we're not Southern Baptist here. I'm sorry. Like, oh, we're, yeah. We're, we're Christian here. We're not Southern Baptist. So you worship the wrong Jesus. Excuse me. We're, uh, <laughs> we're evangelical. We actually worship the end of the world. That is actually <laughs> what we worship. Not yeah. even this. That is actually second to what they are worshiping. <laughs> the end of the world. People I... I prefer to call it uh, Christian porn, but yes, it's uh, yeah. the same kind of thing. <laughs> yes, you're on that side. Well, you know, how did, you know, what do you think of the, of the pitch there, of Greg's pitch there, uh, uh, Rashad, you know, especially you, you, you know. You, you, you missed it because uh, when Greg was starting, I was like at a concert. I had my fist up. I was about to hold my phone up and put the light on, like the Love it. light on and stuff like Like Greg had me with Bruckheimer and, uh, and uh and bay like mm -hmm. honestly i I'm, I'm a child of the 80s you put those guys in a movie and you got me halfway i mean you <laughs> really don't how many bad movies have we watched from those guys and and i still am like yeah i'll still watch that shit you yeah. son of a bitch i'm in <laughs> i mean it's, it it's, 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 so once he put those two people in i mean i heard them but i was still like i'm still going to see this i don't give yeah. a shit i mean because that's what my premise was with the first the, the the first film was like I could never get away from the fact that yeah that's what people want like they want those awesomely bad movies that you get in the summertime just why stop well because Hollywood has its seasons you know like summer movies is when the blockbuster comes out and then fall is when the Oscar bait movies come out with the occasional horror film sprinkled in yeah. then a little a brief respite with christmas films and then you know you got spring where they kind of release the crap that they don't know what the hell to do with but now that summer movie season just kept getting longer and longer and the blockbusters just get released all year round now and it's like just make one out of christmas Man, I yeah think just make one out of christmas i think we got a runaway hit on our hands well yeah with, two of them that, with that, I know it's tough, and I know I've, I've asked Rashawn to go after that, but I think, you know, we need the second in our lineup here of, uh, you know, I, I don't know what our studio name is going to be, Steamy Lou, I don't know, uh, trying to, trying to go, yeah, trying to, trying to figure out some kind of, some kind of homage to, uh, to Desi Lou Studios here. I don't know, um, I guess it comes down to, are we trying to make money, or are we just 
steamy lube? No, we're not trying to make money with that. We're not trying to make money. Come on. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. Why would we want to why would we want to make money? Come on. We're we're not about that. We're about the art. Yeah. Let's be honest. We're about the art. We're about the people. We're about we are. We that's we are. why you're only seeing us people instead. I mean, hearing us people instead of seeing us. If we actually want to make money, we would make sure that these faces made for radio would be front and center. And, and while you're <laughs> you betcha, you betcha. No, there's a reason we work in this lovely audio medium. But with that, I am going to turn it over to the three of clubs because I want him to step on up and give us his his holiday movie pitch here. Give us the elevator speech. Let's make some money, Rashawn. All right, so I'm just going to start right off the bat and point out that I am a sucker for, as Greg likes to call it, the holiday magic, the Christmas magic, whatever. I'm not saying universally. There are definitely movies that I watch, and, and, and I continue to try to implore our listeners to understand that whether you want to look at these things like this or not, race does actually infiltrate every single thing we do, and especially if you're not a white person there are definitely things that will come across and i don't want to speak for everyone i'm not you know it's not a monolithic opinion but i would be surprised if the majority of individuals not white felt the same way i i did and or didn't feel the same way i did in some capacity which is like a lot of the christmas movies kind of get you know boiled down to like eh, it's that's sweet if you're a white person uh but past that <laughs> um and to be fair if you're not even a christian i could argue you would probably come around with the same thing I'm like oh that's that's nice that everyone's doing that that one day of being cool what about the rest of the days when you guys have been absolutely shitty to us like i said sometimes i feel like a muslim in december like i don't exist i mean what, what the hell um <laughs> even atheists get a little shout out in the middle of december with festivus i mean everyone gets a little love except for muslims and that's pretty fucked up but that being said i'm gonna stay away from the hokey uh although as i was going to or starting to admit there are definitely christmas magic movies that will absolutely make me cry i was telling someone the other day it's impossible for me to get through the end of scrooged and not cry i, oh. I am as soon as the kid talks, I'm done. I'm just like, I just forget about it. Uh, Jingle Jangle came out last uh, last year. That was, you know, uh, I would say a pretty good movie. Not the strongest plot, but it's a Christmas movie. It's not really supposed to have a strongest plot. And I barely even made it out of 45 minutes before I was a weeping mess. I will mm -hmm. cry when Clark Griswold cries in Christmas Vacation. There, there, I can keep going, but as Greg points out, the Christmas magic works if you do it right and you really don't have to work that hard to do it right i mean people cry watching elf it's it's not that hard to do because really what the christmas magic is doing is pulling on the shared experiences that we've all sort of collectively had after the timeline that i've since pointed out in the last two episodes of how americana has moved the idea of christmas into such a universal experience that really it's not that hard to make a Christmas movie. You really, you can fall down and make a good Christmas movie because once again, it's, it's about familiarity. It's people see things and they're like, oh yeah, I've gone through that. I've felt that. I've heard that. I've said those conversations. I've been in that situation. Familiarity breeds uh, complacency. And, and then after a while you're comfortable. So it's just like, all right, you're nulled into or lulled into a sense of enjoyment, which is a really weird way to approach things. So I'm going to avoid that and go in a different direction. Now, I know this is kind of a little uh, avant-garde and in the last, you know, let's say decade, one individual who famously hates Jewish people and also uh, black people and isn't all that great with women, however, it continues to get women, even though he smells like a complete trash bag gone through diarrhea and then smacked in the face of a septic take. Um, this individual a couple of years ago came out with a movie that was lauded across all of Hollywood as one, the return of this individual, and also just an awesome premise to uh, Christmas movies with the, the whole Killer Santa thing. I'm not going to say the movie's name, but I think you can figure out based off of what I've just talked about and the individual and also the movie, who I'm talking about and what movie it is. You can go look it up. Google works for everyone. But I'm going to go ahead and take it in the direction of, yeah, let's have a little violent fun with this shit. Not all of it is going to be violent, but definitely let's have some violent fun. So I'm going to start with one that's going to be kind of easy to understand, but still a fun premise to play with. And that would be Santa Breaks Bad. 
Santa develops a drug through coal and develops a drug empire only to be betrayed by a few elves and then taken down by the U.S. government and a person who was hiding behind the visage of the moniker Black Pete. Spoiler alert, he ain't black and his name's not Pete. However, oh, he's, he's... Oh, snap. Oh, oh. You know, like I said, the premise is Santa's out there dealing drugs, a super drug through coal, which is, you know, playing on the whole idea. If you're bad, you get the coal. Well, he's only fucking with the bad people. That's his people. That's how he gets down. That is how he's actually supporting your fucking toy habit, kids. Get over that shit. He's actually having to do a lot of fucked up things like Walter White did to support his family just to make it in the world. You know how much it costs to put electricity in North Pole? You guys are fucking selfish. So anyway, on to the next idea. <laughs> the next idea, and this is something that I kind of always thought about as a kid, because it's like, wait, what are the Christmas colors? So how about the Color Wars uh, as a movie, where a secret internal force of Xmas icons battling over what is the true Christmas colors, red and green versus blue and white. However, in a nice little clincher of a plot, Gold is secretly manipulating both sides to eventually take over the full color scheme of Christmas. Ooh. So that's the one idea right there. Also, another idea, Christmas is ran by a legion or a cabal or organization of elves, whatever the fuck you want to call it. So really the whole, we're flipping it. You know, it's not the fat man running around, and, you know, being abusive to like millions of elves, which mathematically never made sense. Like I always thought, and shout out to Robot Chicken. They sometimes approach it in a way that it's like, yeah, I kind of think that's the only way it's going to happen. But it's like, wait, the math doesn't make sense. Way more than anything else. There's like millions of elves. This guy has like a factory that can produce shit that can be disseminated across the world in one day on a global scale. This, how many employees does this person have? You can toss in magic all you want, but at a certain point, there's manpower, there's labor, and there's way more than him. So like, why don't they just gang up on him? And as I point out, Robot Chicken, you know, brutally points out, no, he'll just fucking murder all of them and then replace them real fast. So I guess that's why. However, we're going to flip it. It's not the fat man running the whole thing. It's actually been the elves running the whole thing. And we find out that they actually report to a legion of Mrs. Clauses. So Ooh. this whole thing is ran by the Mrs. Clauses. They leave with the exterior or the, the sort of uh, uh, picture model that we've been uh, fed of, you know, some old white woman staying at home and cooking cookies and shit and making sure the fat man stays fat throughout the year and all that good stuff and all that. But actually, no, these women, and I mean women, are a collection of uh, individuals who have been running Christmas our entire time. Um, also, because we're children of the 80s, uh, some of us, some of us children of the 70s, but it's all good. We all love each other, but we came up in the 80s and the 90s. I'm going to say a phrase that should ring true to many of us. There can only be one. So with that said, we're going with a Santa Highlander. And now, in this plot, we're not going so galactic, right? We have to kind of bring the timeline in scope, right? Because we're talking about something that we all understand, which is the holiday of Christmas. So in this case, what we're doing is Santas are going around offing each other each decade to determine who gets to fly the sleigh because he who flies it runs the North Pole for the whole year until or the whole decade until the new Santa emerges and the old Santa is sent to Valhalla. Why Valhalla? Why the fuck not? I'm literally talking about someone who's in North Pole running a goddamn empire who can send toys all over the place in one goddamn day. So if you're going to have a problem with Valhalla, you better have a problem with the rest of it. So yeah, old Santa gets to go to Valhalla. Why not? He's a warrior. He's a warrior of commerce. That's what we're going with. So then another Christmas idea movie that I'm running with is every Christmas is navigated by the reindeer that win a year-long brutal competition that resets each year. However, Rudolph is the first reindeer to break through the ranks in like over a century of these group of champions. So these champion reindeer, even though it's every year, they're showing up and it's brutal. They're just off in all their competition and they win centuries, centuries people, like even predating the idea of Santa. This group of reindeer just, they're almost immortal which I'm saying centuries. So just work with the timeline of a long lifespan, people. Just go with it. So with that said, 
Rudolph is the first one in centuries to actually break through, which breeds the resentment that we all come to understand growing up in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Well, good prequel for you, but violent. So then the next one is, yeah, I love this one. The world finds out that Santa was real, but had been missing by, uh, for a few years. However, it didn't affect Christmases. Matter of fact, many recognize that their Christmases were even better since the date of Santa's disappearance. The world also finds out that other mystical figures existed as well, but only by finding them brutally murdered. The movie ends with a point of view of a different seasonal icon about to be murdered and saying, you were only supposed to stay in the cold, fat man, um, and then dying to a malicious ho, ho, ho. And then the last one, because I know I'm about to be cut off and, and this is my MO, so deal with the people. Three clubs, I show up, it's your, it's your job to get to 21. Um, the last one, and this is how we actually started the premise of this whole subject of this episode. I got to go back to Die Hard, but we're going to take a character and we're going to pull him out and we're going to break him down and we're going to make his life fucking matter. It is the life story of my man, Booby, the white knight, Harry Ellis. We're going to tell the life story of Harry Ellis seen through every Christmas that he has had leading up until the second to last or the Christmas right before Die Hard. And upon that Die Hard, I mean, upon that Christmas right before Die Hard, we are going to have him understand that not only has he had a great life, but that was the best Christmas he had ever had. And his life is only going to get better after that Christmas. He had the good Christmas Coke. I mean, don't forget that. Yeah, I was going to say, like, did he? His life I just was, assume he did nothing but Coke. I'm not that saying was, how his life was good, and I'm not saying how his life is going to be made better. That is for the script writers. I am the big, I'm the macro guy. You're, just, you're, doing, you're doing a treatment. I get it. It's I'm a treatment. Saying, we'll, we'll start, yeah, we'll start at, like, Harry Ellis at 10, when we find yeah. out how he discovered his, you know, white knight persona, and we'll yeah. continue to follow it through, through his years of development until he's about 38, couple of hard moments in life lessons they had to learn throughout that he learns each Christmas because remember we're telling it through his Christmases and it ends with his last Christmas being so profound he knows his life is just that much better moving forward I I, I, I mean, definitely yeah. am liking it. I definitely am liking it I mean yeah. maybe he discovers blow at 10 that's a possibility what yeah. he needs after all. I mean, if you look at the timeline, the guy was close to 40 in 1988. So it's not hard to believe he didn't grow up during a time where it was sure illegal, but probably really easy to get. So, yeah, the, you know, there, there, there was that, you know, it was between the 60s, 70s. I mean, we got to explain how a man was so com- coke or not. Like, uh, we've all known a lot of people fucking blown up on coke. But we we had I, I want to show why my man was so comfortable sitting in front of international terrorists and thinking he could talk them down by just literally talking bullshit. Like he didn't even <laughs> offer anything. He didn't really <laughs> have anything. My man was just like, look, I got the skills. Like I want to see how my man developed into a person where forget again drugs. You have to have the, such the sack, such the intestinal fortitude as my man mitch foley used to say to fucking be there to even think that, on top of that forget that you think you're gonna win negotiate the whole thing he didn't even have a doubt there was no doubt like there's like yeah. look, there's not enough drug deals to be in unless you are a drug dealer and i'm not even saying that's good enough for you to be in front his fucking hans gruber's own men didn't even talk to this dude like this and he did jobs with them but this dude shows up coked out or not and he's the white knight. I'm just saying, I want to see a Christmas movie where we see his life develop through his Christmases exclusively, ending with his second to last Christmas of his life. I, I, I'm with you. I, I guess yeah. technically his last Christmas because Die Hard takes place on Christmas Eve. So he doesn't even actually make it to that Christmas. So really, uh, hey, it's hey. last Christmas. As close as he's going to get. I mean, mm-hmm. that's really it. And yes, cocaine is a hell of a drug. It definitely might give you the confidence to go into Hans and his crew in that moment where he says, you're, you're amazing. You've figured all this out, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy it. Like for me, he just, he symbolized the douchebag America. Yes. Well, and, yeah, these, was, you know, and these Europeans are just kind of looking at him like, yeah, you're so smart and confident. Uh-huh. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you've totally figured it out entirely as you know, you know, Dr. King would have wanted. Um <laughs> hey, can you have- get us the guy? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, they um, had Theo downstairs working the computers and working the locks. Okay. All right. Yeah. Theo, exactly. It was like Theo like, was the brains of the outfit down there. Yeah. Because the, I mean, that would that I thought that that was a great thing to show up. You know what I mean? Like this guy walks in with all of the confidence of a coked out Wall Street guy in the eighties, and he's positive <laughs> that he's going to make a deal. He's positive. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? After all, yeah. Come on. As he says, right? He lays it all out right there. He's like, hey, I negotiate million dollar deals for breakfast. You guys, you know, you guys are on your political quest. Like I say, only show his Christmases, progress it through his life, and just show how that last Christmas he proclaims no matter what. So we can say he's this guy. We can say he's a totally different guy. I'm just pointing out this movie ends with his last Christmas saying, not only is this the best Christmas, but my life has changed. Is gonna be only better after this. Going better after this. I, I, um, bear with me here. Here's how I'm seeing it. I'm seeing Netflix or HBO Max series. That way, like each episode, you get, you know, oh, yeah. Christmas, right, 1974, Christmas, 1980. You know, like you just move it along. Each one yeah. is. is Josh, you know, Josh, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now. I don't give a fuck if like Zuby shows up and hands us a contract <laughs> uh-huh. I, don't, I don't give a fuck and i'm not even sure if zuby is real uh, to, uh, Tubi, i know it's Tubi. Real. i think it's Tubi, Tubi, yeah. which is the illegitimate cousin of amazon prime video so, <laughs> so we would get the knockoffs <laughs> the knockoff dollar store version of it which would be zuby so it's like you know, exactly. you, know, you know you're dealing with weird you know uh territory when you get the knockoff of the knockoff of the knockoff Yes, you're like, oh, no, 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 that's Zuby with a Z. If you go to Tubi, we're not going to be on there. And you need to make sure that's that's dot org dot gov dot xxx dot com, right? You know, by, by, the way, kids, by the way, kids, and speaking of toys, another fun history lesson. In the 80s, there was a lot of toys and convenience stores like Walgreens and CVS and shit like that. Like they had a very legit toy aisle. However, well, in grocery stores. However, what was always funny was it was never almost ever on brand. It was always like 14 levels of a knockoff down. Sometimes they would get so lazy, they would loop back around to the point where they wouldn't want to hide what they're trying to knock off. They'd just be like no. Transformers, but with two Fs. Like it would just be no. like- that, that, I mean, those toys were, you know, 100% for, you know, the dad that forgot he has the kids this week. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> he Absolutely. has to go and grab some fucking toys. Like you, you get the wireless card that still had the wire. I mean, like- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Soldier man, man. Yeah, his so camouflage, and here he's gonna oh, fight. Man. It'd be like Soldier Man and in, instead Sword of Guy, like Soldier Man David. <laughs> like, <All> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can get, get the David parachute or, version now. Like that was always the best yeah, yeah. one you threw out the window, or the one you threw up in the air and watched, you know, glide down slowly, right? You know, because he had a parachute. I do love that they still have the commercials where they try to make those like Hess vehicles look like the shit. Right. <laughs> it's it's a gas station chain Hess, but it's I like break it to you. My kids demanded their Hess truck again this year because I didn't. Yeah, exactly. And like they, they have the like best bitch. fucking commercials for Hess truck. You know what? I watch it. I'm like, yeah, well, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah Isaac, absolutely. Yeah, Isaac basically walked up to me and and you know, speaking of terrorism, he committed emotional terrorism this year. And he was basically like, "Are you getting us a Hess truck this year? Because you didn't get us a Hess truck last year." Like, yeah, flat out. You know, might as well have just been holding a little 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 doll named Christmas with a gun to its head. Like, I'll fucking do it, man. I'll hold that finger. <laughs> I'll kill this. You gonna kill my it's childhood? Too- it's too late, Josh. Truck. It's too late, Josh. He's gonna torture a puppy. It's gonna yeah, no, that yeah, it's too late. It's a, it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> yeah, speaking of right on the head. I didn't want to talk to you about the group of dead squirrels I saw at your house. Uh, last yeah, right. You're hitting it closer than, than you realize. But all right, I'm definitely <laughs> I'm seeing I'm seeing that Netflix. And it's all your fault. 
Yeah, it is 100% on your we, fault. We all know that. Yes, no, we yeah. all know that it's 100% Farron's fault. We get it. Uh, but I'm definitely, I'm seeing that Netflix series though. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling a Netflix series. I think, I think we got the next big thing, especially around the holidays. So we'll have Greg's, you know, Santa Claus must die going on there. And, mm. you know, and then the, the, the white night Christmas, the booby Christmas the booby. series, you know, the booby Christmas. Oh, you call it becoming booby. We can becoming we, booby. I like that. Booby. Booby. We, can, we can call it like, you know, the white night cometh. You know? Yeah, that's good. I do in your in, in that premise though. I want the actor who plays Todd at some point to be from Breaking Bad somehow to be re- woven in there, and he oh. needs to show up, you know, dropping bodies and singing '70s soft soft rock hits. Like that's the one thing that every Christmas movie needs. Wait, in the in the the Harry Ellis one or the Breaking Bad one? Both. Why not both? I can both see. A, are, I huh? see. I see a space for Todd in both of them. That's all I'm saying. There's, there's a right. meme of that that poor actor. I think it's like Jesse Plum Plum Plumman or something like that. They're like basically whenever this guy shows up, some fucked up shit's about to happen. It happened. Yeah. Yeah. Or different things. Yeah. That he did where it literally his character goes on to do the worst fucking thing in the whole series. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, with, that dude is so good. Uh, so, all right. All right. Two, two bangers. I think we got there Two absolute bangers of ideas going on. So it is, it's time for me to, to anchor this, this here, to step on up and, and bat and clean up here and take my 10 minutes to, to, to try and make us some money. But, you know, I, I, firstly, I've been preceded by some amazing ideas, so I don't know how, how this is all going to stack up, but I, I'm, you know, sticking close to a couple of things here. Really, when I think Christmas, I think about like, you know, we, we've talked a lot about going up into the, the modern roots of Christmas. Uh, and I go even back to how we got the Christmas tree and that being our influence from Germany into world wars. Uh, and the most famous incident being uh, in, in 1917, the Christmas truce between German and American troops on the lines when for a while when they walked across, you know, because what says Christmas again, more like war. I think we've, we've definitely come on to it in America that mm. you know you need war you need destruction you need a body count even in a christmas movie like there's josh, just you know yeah josh i'm sorry but i i have to say this because they always fucked with me my entire life l- learning that lesson of what happened i think it was called armistice day um well that's yeah that's later on but yeah but what always killed me is uh, I look at it the opposite. What says war? Like being able to stop one day to walk around, uh, walk across battle lines, and like literally have dinner, uh, meals with each other. Like, yeah, if we it, really it, have it, a yeah. conflict if that's what we can do. Like, you guys organize this shit. You guys set this up. We we, we can cater it. We can do all this, but we still have to have a war. I, yeah, I like yeah, totally. And there. and you know, I often I actually always thought of it like um, that Looney Tunes cartoon with the coyote and the sheepdog. So it's Wile E. Coyote and the sheepdog. And he's trying to steal, Wile E. Coyote's trying to steal the sheep and they go in, they, they clock in. Morning, Harry. Morning, Fred. Yeah. Right? You know? <laughs> and then like, he's about to like chop him up or whatever. And then the whistle blows and they're like, oh, see you tomorrow, Harry. See you tomorrow, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like they just <laughs> going in. It's, it's the same idea. It was like somebody blew the whistle on the war and it was like, ah, let's, let's see it. You know, let's share some rations and oh shit. You know, you got some, some things like that, you know, and then, you know, hours later, <laughs> whatever, whatever midnight strikes, like, all right, back to killing each other. Let's do it. But oh shit, I, actually, I, that that's an interesting, you know, thing to point out. Like, we got to get back to Josh's thing in a second, but that is an interesting thing to point out. It's gonna be the first Christmas in a long time that we're not at war. It's true. So oh, yeah. you know, Whoa. with that, I want to make sure that we're Welcome bringing back in for Oceana. I I have to say that, you know, I'm going with still sticking with that with the Christmas truce and also going back to uh, the song I mentioned earlier, which maybe I I should I think I'll I'll have to link it in the description uh, Christmas at ground zero right that I don't care what time of year it is, I have a certain dark sense of humor that's going to shine through and and that that's that's not going to leave you know so you know, Weird Al saw it. And so with all of that, and now it's a bit of a meandering start, but what I want to bring to you here, because it's going off the air soon, I think we need a last hurrah. And I think I need to give to you the Walking Dead Christmas special, a very Woo! Walking Dead Christmas. 
is all I'm saying. I think we're, we're missing an opportunity here. And here's the beauty of it. Because it's a Walking Dead Christmas special, we can do flashbacks. You don't have to, like, it's going to be, you know, thinking about Christmas's past in the zombie apocalypse, right? So you can bring back characters from the show that you're going to that are dead or supposedly dead, and they're probably going to be bring be bring back some of these anyway, right? But just, you know, hold on here with me here. Firstly, our first story, we reminisce about the time Rick decided he needed to get a Christmas present for Carl, okay? So, you know, it's always Carl uh, going on about that. So, you know, it is one of those cases. So, Rick, you know, randomly has to go on out into, into the, the wasteland that, that is humanity and somehow has to find, uh, you know, is, is finding the ultimate toy or whatever it is that Carl wants for Christmas. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's just some food uh, <laughs> article of clothing. God. really doesn't matter. But yet somehow in the midst of all this, Rick, um, to get that present, has to sleep with another man's wife and kill and kill her husband because that's what Rick does. That's what Rick's going to do <laughs> somehow. In that's how me. Rick do. That's how Rick do somehow in the zombie apocalypse, right? But the, the fact that he's willing to go through all this for his son, you know, that's really the message of Christmas that, that we're bringing here, right? You know, that's, that's really what, you know, what, what's going to be going on here in the, in the Walking Dead Christmas special. That Rick yeah, is gonna, totally. Yeah, Rick just, is totally yeah. going to put himself out there. He's totally going to endanger himself to make sure, because he's going to be, God damn it, he's going to make sure his son still has a good Christmas season, all right? <laughs> now, follow me here a little bit more. Now, next story. <laughs> J- Jimmy Stewart would totally do it. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm, I, 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 you know, uh, exactly right. Every time, every time an angel, angel gets his wings, we chop a zombie's head off. Something like that. But we can all work that out later on with the right. Now, on on uh, now next story. Cheryl wakes up and it's the Christmas season, so she only decides to kill half the number of people that she would in any given episode, for starters, for any reason whatsoever. Maybe somebody has a cold. They got to fucking die. You know how that goes, right? Because yeah. when we all saw how Cheryl went down in lockdown mode. Like, motherfuckers were going to die. That was mm. just the case right um we all saw how it is when she's with any enemy even when she's crying no somehow she sneaks the world's most accurate submachine gun into her pocket and like fucking mows down a line of people so maybe she only kills three out of the six people she would normally kill it's a holiday miracle all right Mm -hmm. you know um you know that that's that's the case that you know she's imbued with the holiday spirit and only half the body count goes all right on to the next story. Daryl has to trade his crossbow to give a gift to Michonne, and Michonne gives up her katana to give a gift to Daryl. It's the gift of the Magi oh. in the Walking Dead universe, right? I mean, right there. This is a big deal here. Oh, yeah. these, are, these are their signature weapons. These are what they get by on, you know. And what do you? It's like, but I, you know, maybe they end up giving each other the crossbow and the and the and the katana back. Who knows? But I'm just saying. We got this right here, right? We got, we got it. Okay. Now, uh, you know, now just to make sure that uh, um, that we get everybody in here, uh, I've got Abraham is uh, is going to make sure that he goes and uh, lights a zombie on fire, one for each night of Hanukkah. So, you know, mm-hmm. I want to make sure we are well represented. Nice. I don't even know nice. if Abraham's Jewish. He just has a, obviously a very Jewish name, but you know. <laughs> we can go across you know exactly lincoln not a jew we get it uh but yeah i just want to make sure i give the, the nod here you know the, this uh, just and all of that and then finally in the christmas spirit and this is we're gonna we'll be flashing back before uh you know in the earlier years of negan uh the entire crew will go out and serenade um negan's crew and all the survivors there in the fact Factory, uh, and sing them Christmas carols and Silent Night. And again, Negan will be, you know, so warmed and imbued with the Christmas spirit, he'll just immediately start beating people to death with, <laughs> with his baseball bat, right? <laughs> just saying, with a tear running down his eye, talking Aww. about, you know, exactly like, you know, he wants to stop Christmas from coming. You know, maybe he goes, he steals all their gifts and <laughs> kills a couple of people there and then they still sing the christmas carols right because you know 
what else can you get if you don't have, you know, who else would symbolize the Grinch more in the Walking Dead universe than Negan, at least in his earlier iterations, that to, to make him stand up. I mean, I really think that is, is, uh, is, is uh, Christmas Negan all around, right? It's just, it's truly, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's truly the case. But this is what I'm saying. I really think that there is a space, uh, especially because it's wrapping up in spinal seasons. I really think it, there was a space here uh, to finish on up and to, you know, to bring the walking dead into the Christmas sphere. So, you know, we're getting a touch early today, but that was really what I've been walking around with all, all week. I really want to see a very walking dead. Okay, Christmas. I think, I think there's a lot of meat there. You know, I think one thing, cause I, I know he's a popular character, but I literally checked out of that show because of Negan. Like if yeah. I had to listen to one more wandering fucking rant from that man, please hit me with your bat. Please hit me with your bat. <laughs> I've just <laughs> had enough. But uh, uh, honestly, I think that would be e- even a legit one. I mean, obviously that would have some uh, uh, comedic elements to it, but to kind of see a little bit more of what happened to uh, uh, traditions in this post-apocalyptic apocalyptic zombie world. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting on a couple of levels. I, I, you know, I think we got, I think we got room to maneuver in the space. I think, you know, I think really, you know, I'm still at heart a zombie guy. What can I tell you that I, yeah. I still, I still want to, you know, I still want my good zombie specials and all that. And, you know, Walking Dead still holds a standard up there. It's, it's high mm-hmm. up there. You know, we've, we've tried to replace it with a few things and army of the dead and everything else recently, but you know, truthfully that, that still holds, that still is a bit of a standard bear. Oh, Rashad, what you got? What thoughts? We going to green light this project? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm totally down with that. I had survived in The Walking Dead a little bit longer than Greg, where I went like one season after Negan, but I, I haven't watched the last like three, I think that, that has been. I'll probably end up watching it because I'm with you. It's, it's, if you like zombies, you kind of have to. Um, however, I would argue, no, you don't have to like The Walking Dead. And after season one, it really, really jumped the shark. Uh, one thing I do want to point out that while you're talking, and unfortunately, I tried to interrupt, and I'm sorry, but it, it just struck me. What's more unbelievable in The Walking Dead universe, the actual zombies or Daryl's endless supply of arrows? No, oh, I def- definitely, uh, definitely the endless supply of arrows. You know, yeah, I mean, I was they, say, they, they coin, even, ad- you know? they even at least, ad- and the fact that the compound, he's got a compound crossbow, and that that hasn't broken down by that. You know, they they eventually got to the point where they were addressing lack of ammunition, lack of cars. Right, driving, like you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I felt like and during that season, which was a pretty cool and interesting plot point over, I think, what two seasons. Um, yeah. Like, I just felt like it was really weird that they would go on and on and on about the importance of making sure they could produce ammunition while Daryl, for the last, like, 17,000 days, had just shooting arrows left and right. Like, I, I just watched a vodcast on someone shitting on video games because the character in the video game can hold more than one um, weapon, and that's supposed to be, like impossible and like mind you we're talking about video games where a character is like jumping off buildings um oh, yeah. getting multiple lives i mean i could keep going so like yeah, it's, it's really you know capacity an issue but like i feel like daryl is literally their version of the video game guy who not only has an endless supply of ammo but just keeps pulling arrows out like we don't even see him holding arrows he doesn't have a quiver sack there's just nothing like my man just like, like you gotta shoot a bunch of people I have as many arrows as you do bullets. It's like, I have to be on <laughs> mm-hmm. How is that even possible? I have literally 48 bullets in this clip. How do you have the same amount? You, you don't even look like you're holding 48 arrows. What the fuck? Yeah, no, it is, uh, it is definitely the case. And the fact that he's always there and shooting and shooting those, cro- those crossbow arrows even faster than most people could shoot their bullets. It is definitely definitely the case well there you have it folks you have our holiday movie pitches i think we ought to start uh, a go fund me some form of crowdsourcing i think we need to uh make sure or that just we get pay this. us hollywood just pay well, us. that's it hollywood we're here you know vault us you know let's 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 make this happen hollywood uh, whoever the president whoever the current president 
of Hollywood is. I think actually that's uh, Ryan Reynolds. Let's be honest. He just announced his his candidacy for president of Canada. Yes, that was that's what he was saying. Uh, Sadly, him, Josh, me. you're still a part of this country who think that because of your lineage, you may know the president of Hollywood. Yeah, you know exactly. There's there, he's out there somewhere, but nevertheless, but yeah, I'm gay if space you would, landers. if you would do us the favor of giving us a little holiday gift, see how we segued into that there. If you can head on over to Apple Podcasts or to iTunes, drop us the old five star review there, and you know just a little funny anecdote about you know josh keeps forgetting rashawn's there or you know whatever whatever it is you can put whatever you want in the review notes but just try and help us edge up on those charts a little bit get on those algorithms push us out a little bit listen to us so you can uh you can uh, check us out on the socials we are there on facebook at the steam gentleman we are there on instagram at do you uh do you even steam bro uh, also the steam gentleman on channel on youtube any of these places you can check us out and make sure to bring us on with that just getting as we're heading in towards those holidays we're probably gonna be taking a break coming up soon but gregory what you got lined up on this uh, almost holiday weekend here oh not nothing much um you know i'm gonna uh, check out from here and see if uh you know my cat is dying oh i'm I, well we're terribly sorry to hear about that magic we we send out nothing but the best of holiday holiday spirits to you and uh yeah i'm yeah i'm uh you know uh uh, worried about it too if it is uh time to cross the the rainbow bridge we we wish you we wish you godspeed magic we all you know we're we're three guys who all uh, own cats here i mean that's just kind of the way it is so think about think of us what you will so ah send those positive vibes to my cats too absolutely magic you you got this you're gonna be okay cat Rashawn, three of clubs. What you what you got coming up in this uh, almost holiday weekend coming up here? Apparently, sound like an asshole because I'm following uh, a cat dying. So you know, <laughs> you and uh, anything said in comparison that isn't as sad is just viewed as just like, yeah, well, look what I'm doing, motherfucker. I mean, like, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know uh, funeral crashing, I guess. Oh, <laughs> All right. Rashad. Rashad just the kids look this up. I'm sure it's on YouTube, but Rashad just literally pulled a Casey Kasem outtake, uh, famous Casey Kasem outtake, where he goes, I gotta give an obituary to a fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, like and this was the voice of Scooby Doo, no less. Come on, or at least yeah. Shaggy. Uh, you know, he's like, I gotta go on talking about a fucking dead dog. He was so <laughs> pissed. And so there you go. All right. Yeah, well, I hope Greg, your cat feels better i've gone through it it's not fun so um not doing that this weekend i I was planning on getting a tree dressing a tree and getting drunk listening to christmas music like uh wham which by the way but has anyone actually broken down the lyrics to last christmas from wham because my man's literally talking about fucking through christmas songs i mean yes i applaud it i am down for it like that's cool but like how did this just slip through some of the weird like uh extra sort of sensory um you know what's the word i'm looking for uh prudish prudish type parts that we had in those weird pockets of the 80s and uh, 90s how did it slip past because like if you listen to it for a second my man's literally talking about getting it on yeah, well, getting it on as 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 all good Christmas tunes should talk about, you know, I mean, and the euphemisms, stuffing the stocking, unwrapping the presents. I mean, they go on and on. Like, I'm just saying it's 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 Look, it's a time it, right for winter, double autonomy. It's winter. It's dark. And up until the what mid 1800s, that also meant you were in darkness. So you didn't have much else to do. There is that. There yeah. is that. Well, well. This is Josh, the Birdman, uh, wishing you a happy holidays and going into a very merry new year. We'll be back very soon with more episodes of The Steam, gentlemen. I did just get the cat back from the vet and got a healthy report, so we're good there. So no, so <laughs> most well, of the we're, cats, we're really just piling on, Greg, aren't we? I'm over uh, here I got, drunk, dressing I, a tree. You're like, I got my cat back. I mean, wow, that's great. That's, I'm, you know, so well, I got an older cat, though. Heartless. I got an older cat and she pukes like two, three times a day. So yeah, I've a, been through that. It's a good possibility that, that, that I may, you know, we'll see what we may see with, uh, what that, what that holds for the holidays, but hopefully we can squeeze her through the holidays in the meantime, but 
Well, this is Josh, the Birdman, saying, sending you all the best. Hope all your pets are doing well this Christmas. And please stop by uh, again, drop those rate and reviews in for us. And this is Josh reminding you to keep your he uh, head of steam, uh, keep your heat up and keep your head of steam on. 